can start. Okay. Namaste. Today we are having a special lecture program on astrology. This is an endowment lecture from the Raman Rajeshwari Research Foundation. And in the beginning, as usual, I will be telling about the Raman Rajeshwari Foundation. The Raman Rajeshwari Research Foundation was founded by Dr. B. V. Raman and his son Sri Niranjan Babu in 1983. The foundation is a non-profit endeavoring to revive, rejuvenate, and promote the study of Vedic astrology, Vastu, Yoga, Ayurveda, Vedanta, and other related Indian sciences. The foundation has also funded, funded and supported various Vedic activities like building temples, sponsoring Vedic marriages, etc. Under the leadership of its current chairman, Sri Niranjan Babu, the foundation has emerged as a pioneer in the advancement of and digitization of Vedic astrology. It has developed and distributed free astrological software, digitized astrological content, and undertaken path-breaking research in Vedic astrology, including the use of artificial intelligence, big data, sp spatial analysis, etc., and making it accessible to the astrological world. Till date, the foundation has organized over a hundred events, including conferences, lectures, seminars, and workshops, including the recently conducted Vedic Astrology Master's class. Eminent speakers include Sri T. N. Shishan, Dr. David Fraley, Swami Harshananda, Dr. T. S. Vasan, Dr. Bill Avesi, and Dr. Ramalige Parthsarthi, Swami. Sita Ramananda, Swami Sukhabodhananda, Pandit Sanjay Rat, Shatadhani Dr. R. Ganesh and Sri D. N. Munikrishna to name a few. And if you would like to revive, receive the regular updates on Vedic Astrology, Vastu Shastra and related activities, we encourage you to visit the website http www.rrrf.in or join the telegram channel of the Raman and Rajeshwari Research Foundation. And coming to the today's endowment lecture, it is started from the Raman Rajeshwari Research Foundation in the name of late Sri B. Surya Prakash. Late B. Surya Prakash was born in November 1935 and he died at an early age of 27 years. Dr. Sri Surya Prakash was the eldest son of Dr. B. Dr. and Shri Mrs. B. V. Raman. Did his engineering at BMS College of Engineering and wrote several articles to the astrological magazine which brought atten attention from many noted authorities on astrology. We should note here that he did it, he died at the age of 27 years itself but he achieved a very good knowledge in the, by that age itself in the field of astrology. He was an engineer by profession. Then every September astrological magazine is dedicated to Sri late Surya Prakash. Since he was knowing his lifespan is very short, he did not marry. And he kept that point secret from his mother also and in the memory of late B. Surya Prakash, Dr. Ram, B. V. Raman and Rajeshwari Raman instituted this uh, endowment lecture in the Indian Institute of World Culture. It, this first lecture was held in 2nd November 1991 and it is continuing. Today, as part of this endowment lecture, we are having Dr. Nemani Venkataragunathra with us to give this special lecture on introduction to Kashyapa Hora Shastra, Hora Nadi Shastra, Prashna Method. 
once again an introduction to kashyapa hora nadi nadi prashna method by dr nemani venkata ragunathra to introduce i i welcome dr nemani venkata ragunathra for today's lecture on behalf of the institute as well as bv raman and rajeshwar raman trust to introduce the speaker dr nemani venkat raghunath rao shortly called as mr rao is from parvati puram near vizag from andhra pradesh andhra pradesh and at present he lives in san francisco california usa dr rao got his phd in business management from usa and currently working as a sales director in a technology consulting organization in san francisco dr nemani is practicing vedic astrology since 2002 dr rao is a jyotishya student of sri h ramdas rao then pandit sanjay rat and dr Daksh- pandit dakshina murthy ramaswami swami onkar ji and sri madhubabu prakhya dr nemani has received jyotish visharada from council of vedic astrology cba usa dr nemani has authored four astrological books authored over 50 jyotish articles and published in reputed astrology magazines such as the astrological e magazine bbb journal of astrology and the planets and forecast dr nemani can be reached at rao r a o n 1008 at gmail.com today we are having a special uh, attraction for the viewers those attending this lecture after the lecture he will ask a question and using that you can analyze your uh, analysis about today's lecture and you can send a mail email to him and he will send one of his books to you free of cost therefore please listen to the lecture carefully so that it will be useful to get in getting a book on your favorite subject the astrology and i welcome once again dr nemani venkat raghunath rao for this special lecture sir you are welcome and dias is for you thank you namaste thank you prashanna ji thank you girish for technical background thanks for your help and of course Thank you, Narendra Mohan Garu, Supraja Rama, and also uh, thanks for Ravan and Rajeshri Foundation plus Indian Star World Culture Bangalore. So today I'll be sharing some of my <clears throat> thoughts on um, Kashyap Hora Nadi, which I received from Sri Raju Rao Garu. So I call the introduction because there's so much to do, and I think possibly we can learn or we can share only a little bit in 60 minutes. So with that note, I'll take this opportunity to say. It is December 16, 2021. It's about 6:15 p.m. IST and 4:45 a.m. in San Francisco. So I wanted to pray to my Jyotish Acharyas and also pray to Mother. Om Gurave Namaha. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om Surya Yama. <coughs> Om Sri Ay Nama. Om Sri Ay Nama. Om Sri Ay Nama. Hare Rama Krishna. So the knowledge what I am going to share with you is directly come came from these acharyas. My acharyas, uh, first is Vamkoti Krishna Yajgaru from Parvati Brahm. He actually initiated me into the Jyotish by giving. Subramanya Sur Mantra Sadhana when I was in ninth grade. So thank you, sir. And my other teachers, Pandit Sanjay Ragaru and Ramdas Ragaru, Swami Omkarji, you can see Dakshina Murthy Garu, and Madhuba Madhuba Upraki Garu, and most importantly, Dr. Baby Raman, because I think I've learned so many from his books, just like many of you. So I wanted to offer my pranams to all of them. Then of course, <clears throat> Sri Arjun Garu today. Uh, the topic from him, I think he's basically guiding the force today. I am just a pipe, a conduit, giving what I know through his point of view. I got a, I got a really fortunate to meet him in multiple times in Bangalore. This is one of those uh, early years in my age. I went and learned this Prashna Nadi, 
and also some other nerdy techniques I'll talk about later on. But today, thank you, sir. This is your knowledge just dedicated to you, Arjun Raga. So the agenda today is going to be, um, we'll talk about some basic definitions. And I think in the Naughty Astrology by Sri Arji Ravagaru, he talks about causative effects. The causative effect is nothing but in a Sanskrit, um, Karakatvas. So we will talk about those. And also Horalad, that's the very key element in this astrological Prashna method. So how to find the Horalad and also if one planet is with Horalad, how to delineate the causative effects. Then we also go into the Horalad plus multiple planets. Then also retrograde planets play a significant role in this particular Nadi principles based astrology. Then I will go through some principles of Kashyapahora Nadi. I think R.G. Rao Garu wrote more than uh, 15, 16 principles. I kind of combine them into uh, something we can use today as 12 or, or 12 or 13. Then after that, I'll take some example charts so that we can see how we, we can take this Hora Lord principle, Kashyap Hora Nadi, and analyze, analyze some of these facts as well. Then we'll talk about references and questions and answers. We have a few minutes to answer them as well. So as Prasanna mentioned that, I wanted to pay attention to this, this particular uh, discussion, make some notes. And this is the question asked by somebody in USA to me. Uh, I've lost my money in stock trading in 2021. Will I earn the lost money back in stock trading in 2022? So what I wanted to ask you, the listeners today and also in the recording session, take this Prashna, apply the Prashna methods, what you learned today, no other Prashna method, exclusively Kashyap Horanadi. Send your analysis to the address, which is my email address, rawn1008 at gmail.com. And whoever gets the first 100 email analysis to me, to this email, I'll make sure that you'll get this book, Foundations of Rao System of Naughty Astrology, to your home address. I think the book condition maybe is a little bit old because I think this is all books are out of print many times. Thanks to my best friend, Sunil John from Saptarishi Astrology Bookstore. He's organizing and helping me to get this. I'm paying for this for all of you. So again, this is a token of motivation to you to practice this method of Krishna. So the basic definitions are Kashyap Rishi, if you look at this, Lord Brahma's son is Marichi and uh, his wife is Kaladevi, is basically gave birth to Kashyapa. That's how the origination of Kashyapa Rishi was born. And Kashyapa Maharshi and his wife Aditi gave the birth to all Devatas. Of course, Kashyapa Maharshi also has got Diti, which is also gave birth to Suras and Asuras both, basically. Even as you all know from a Puranic references, Lord Vishnu himself took as a Vaman avatara in the in the, 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 the couple of Kashyapa Maharshi and Aditi as well. So it tells us the Kashyapa Maharshi is a Deva Pita and also Sakshat Paramatma. So you got to keep this Puranic relevance in order for us to understand the Vedic uh, knowledge base, particularly Nadi based astrology. You all already know what is Hora, but just a very quick. It's a definition coming from Ahuratra, which is morning and eve, evening or the day and night. If you've taken those two principles, there are 12 zodiacal signs we all know. Each sign has got day and night. So then naturally you have 12 times 2 is 24 uh, zodiac signs. There's 24 Horas are there. So that is how we got this Hora Shastra. It depends on this particular Hora Lord, which we'll talk about in a minute. So this is another foundation we need to understand. And today, if you look at Jagannath Hora, I think there are so many other softwares, it's just easy for you to see. In the Jagannath Hora, there are multiple options for you to choose the Hora definition. There is an LMT definition, and then also you have choices like sunrise and take that one by 24, the sunrise to sunset. I have experimented this multiple definitions of Hora, but what I found is working, which I'm sharing with you today. For example, in San Francisco, the sunrise takes place in the winter, maybe at 7 a.m., not 6, 6 a.m. And sunset takes place at 5 p.m., not 6 p.m. So which means the sun day, date daylight is basically short and not 12 hours, maybe lesser than 12 hours, and night is longer. That's what I found. The definition of Hora, if you take this division by sunrise and sunset time, divide by 24, if you take Hora, I think it's working very well for me, but again, experiment with your local time and see what definition works for you. 
Nevertheless, if you look at today, December 16th, 4.30 a.m. for me, San Francisco, today is Plavanama Samatram, Margasira Masa, Sukla Prayodashi, Wednesday. Why Wednesday? Because it's 4.45 a.m. or maybe quarter to close to 5 a.m. Sunrise did not take place on Thursday. That's why it's still Wednesday. Nakshatra is a Kritika, Lord is Surya, and Yoga is Siddha, Karana is Taitula, Hora Lord is Mercury. The Hora Lord, this is the driver for today. So when you cast your Prashna or Prashna Nadi for based on Kashyap Hora, always consider the Hora Lord Mercury, right? In the sense for this example. So having said that, now I'll be going into a little bit more um, details of presentation mode right now. I'm going in there. The naughty basic definition, if you look at, there are multiple definitions. Are there. One of the could be naughty is basically swara or a breath moment, uh, we can say. And naughty also taken into the marriage matching horoscope alliances for a boy and a girl. Nadi kuta is other things also there. And also Nadi is a smallest unit or arc in zodiac. That's why we have, uh, you know, Nadi Amsa, Atha Nadi Amsa, which is basically divisional chart of D300 or D150. And Nadi is also used in, um, in an Ayurveda, which is basically like a pulse, looking at the pulse indications of the health. So there are so many definitions of Nadi. So in this case, what we do is basically the, the definition of pulse will be taken into this consideration. Now, Prashna. What is Prashna? Prashna Shastra has got so many different meanings, and the way we can see is uh, the, the best way I found to be working as the question or query regarding anything and everything, right? This includes to know the desire and the intention of the questionnaire. So if we wanted to know a question, if somebody is asking a Prashna to you, I think it's an astrologer's first primary responsibility to see what is the intent of this person? What is the intention of asking this prashna? What's the desire of this prashna? If you find that answer within the prashna, if the desire is good, then I would usually go and answer. Otherwise, I would say, today the grahas are not favoring to me to give the answer to you, maybe sometime later. Because the intent and desire is very important for us to know to give the answer. Because somebody is asking, my, my mother-in-law is not feeling well. She's on the ICU right now. Will she die? That may be a very good question. Maybe good. the desire is very good, very nice. But what happens if the, the person asking is whether they're looking for some property after the debt, is the litigations? So we need to find out the desire from the prashna itself, then accordingly we should answer. That's one definition of prashna. It's, in other words, we can say it's like a judicial inquiry or examination of an astrological inquiry to the past, present, and future. So which means we can answer everything in my opinion so the the person is conducted an inquiry is conducted by either one astrologer in this case kashyap Horanari, one astrologer some other personal methods are there like uh, astamangala prashna and those kind of things there are multiple astrologers work together in order to reveal what is there in the deva prashna and things like that also so there are definition the different definitions out there but i think prashna is basically to inquire and find the answer for the the, the person is asking this and also look at in a in a different way. There are multiple methods in Prashna. We need to learn those because if you are seeing me today, this is my face, but possibly the camera is not able to see my other side or back or maybe sides. So if you learn multiple Prashna methods, then you can possibly think like a putting a camera here, putting a camera here, putting a camera here in the back. So you can take those different messages coming from these individual Prashna methods, combine them together. So possibly I can describe this object in front of me in a much better than a single dimension one Prashna method. So use this Prashna method along with the other methods you already know and see what's the common messages coming in and possibly can tell uh, the thing to your, your, uh, your person who's asking the question to you. Before casting Prashna, I always pray to the God give my gurus and say give me the blessings to see the best and apply my abilities to see the best from this particular person i always chant this sanskrit slokam it says janani janma saukhyanam 
वर्धनीं कुल संपदां पदवी पूर्व पुण्यानां लिखयते प्रश्न कुंडली not only this it's a sloka it's recite something to give the best of your abilities to see the prashna chart and delineate apply your principles to give the best to your person asking the question for you okay so there are many methods as i said kashyap hora is one of the ones so this goes into using some simple at the finest method principles i'll be showing to you in a minute so apply this and see how best it works for you right and before i go to the principles and other things just wanted to introduce to you a couple of things i'll be using interchangeably the english and sanskrit words for rashis as well as uh, grahas for example as you all know surya chandra kuja buddha guru shukra shani rahu ketu equivalents are sun moon mars mercury jupiter venus saturn north node and south node similarly rashis are mesha rishabha mithuna karkataka simha kanya tula vrishchika dhanush makara kumbha meena again in english you have aries taurus gemini cancer leo virgo libra scorpio sagittarius capricorn aquarius and pisces maybe take a screenshot of this because you'll be using this quite a, quite often when i go to analysis i'll be using most of the time sanskrit words and you all know if you take this rashi chart i'm just using for convenience as the uh, south indian chart format the aries to pisces as you can see aries is 1 and 2 and we have the 12 right 12 rashis so each of these rashis were given a direction which is aries is east direction and taurus is south and uh, the gemini is west and pisces is north so then they repeat basically so basically northeast southwest northeast southwest so this is what you need to remember uh, when we go to the next definitions of professional principles and also we need to understand the each rashi has got a element which is fire for aries and earth and air and water and also you see each of the rashis are mobile fixed and dual which is basically chara rashi sthira rashi and udaya ubhay rashi So I think keep these principles. I think you already know all this. I just wanted to get something because if somebody is not familiar with this, just giving a foundational uh, principles of Jyotish. So now coming to planets and their causative effects in Kashyapaura. So for example, Surya. I think Surya has got so many uh, karakatvas. Uh, in English, we call causative effects. It can give the planet Surya represents the job related to government, royal courts, father. light and gold so many it's it's impossible to write everything here but i'm just taking some examples here and please read the books very carefully uh, from the ajuragar because he has described many many times repeatedly but he gave additional karakatvas in every book right but i think the one key principle which i understood from ajuragar was understand the puranic relevance of grahas it's not just a mechanical definitions of this in the book or understanding by hearting them rather you need to see what is the puranas uh, our vedic puranas are talking about a grahas for example for surya in the one of the puranas says udaye brahma swarupam madhyane tu maheshwara astamane swayam vishnu strai murti divakara if you take the essence of this meaning of sanskrit shloka is udaye brahma swarupam which means udaye what is the udaye definition is sunrise to say mid time right then madhyane to mid mid time and astamane is the sunset if you take these three definitions if you're casting a prashna or a chart using kashyap and adi at see where is the sun on that day is it in the morning time or midday or in the evening then use this brahma swarupam concept in the morning madhyane to maheshwara astamane swayam vishnu because then he talks about brahma means a creation right madhyane to maheshwara kind of destructing or maybe taking away something and astamane swayam vishnu which sustains so looking at these basic foundations for each grahas we have to put into this nadi shastra which means 
it's not a mechanical prashna. This is completely have to be understanding the Puranas a little bit. That's what Ajiro really insisted me to study before he gave me this knowledge. So try to see if you can get those. Similarly, Chandra, the planet moon represents travel because Chara is constantly at a high, fast moving planet. Mother cheating, if particularly in Krishna Paksha. Vanning moon pertain to debts, pets, digging wells, females aspects. There's so many other, but these are some of the characteristics or Karakatvas. Similarly, we have Kuja, the planet Kuja represents brothers, enemy, machines, excess of heat, husband, police, and weapons. Look at it. All these are mostly the, the fire element. Agni Tattva is basically there, right? Chandra is Jala Tattva. You got to remember those planets and those characteristics. Then Buddha, Mercury, the planet Buddha represents business, friends, intelligence, education, land, those kind of things. Then Guru represents the Jiva. This is the life force. And also health represents position in life and improvements regarding question of the success. If the Jupiter coming into play, then possibly you can say benefic aspects coming into the into the Krishna, right? Similarly, Shukra, the planet Shukra represents wife, elder sister, female aspects, and wealth, vehicles, house, luxury. Standard definitions. I think there are a little bit of more you can read from the books, but I think I want to give the high level uh, characteristics or karakatvas as well. Shani, the planet Shani represents the career matters which is basically work, job, those kind of things. Karma and what, what is designed for this particular person, elder brother and matters pertaining to the uncle. Seni delivers the results of karma in all individuals according to what native is due, right? Uh, whether it could be good or bad, what we perceive to be. But Seni works as a deliverer of karma. So that's what I think we need to understand. Rahu, the dragon head, the plant represents the wheel circle big big wheel giant wheels darkness grandfather which is pitamaha and head front of the door front door of the house and a snake snake like trains the long vehicles all these are rahu's representation right ketu the plant ketu represents impedimental or obstruction aspects and remember always ketu is like a flag a flag such as um the flag of a an organization or government or some kind of a all, they keep the law and order, dwaja, we call in Sanskrit, litigation aspects, disputes, trap, grandmother, which is Mata Maha, and the Darba, we call dried grass as well. So I think those are the very, very high level. This is not exhaustive list itself. So you need to read uh, much more details in Sri Arjirogu's books. And also now we'll talk about Horalard, a planet and with one planet and cause to effect. <clears throat> so, for example, you casted a Prashna Hora taking, using this Kashyap Horanadi principles. If the Hora Lord is Sun, which is basically, if the Hora Lord is Sun and you have one planet moon along with this, then this indicates that Nadu's father will have much more traveling or one of the persons supporting him will be traveling characteristics. Why? Because Sun is the father. In this case, the person is asking question. Moon, as we said, Chara, which is basically travel aspects of it. Very simple and straightforward, right? Similarly, the beauty of this is if the Chandra is the Horalat and Sun is planet coming with this, then the meaning is completely different. That is basically the question regarding father, regarding a notable person, because Sun is a reputed person, a notable person, a father or father-like figure, a guru or teacher. And they talk about difficulties with the moon because moon is giving the challenges, difficulties, or problems. That's how we will delineate into this horror lord. Similarly, if you go to the horror lord as Saturn and the Mars is along with the Saturn, the native question regarding career, because Saturn we talked about job and profession and job career and those kind of things. And with the Mars conjunction with this, I'll talk about the principles of how do you see the conjunctions in a minute. Expecting further prosperity, question regarding promotion or career. Why? Because of Agni Tattva. Saturn is a karma. So these two are saying that this person is asking about promotion in my career. Is an advancement is happening. Some rewards are coming in. That those kind of things can be delineated. Similarly, Mercury is the if the whole lot, if it is with Venus. The question indicates the native has gains of profits through land and wealth, because this Venus indicates 
uh, the prosperity, wealth, and those kind of characteristics. And person is asking about this. So that is how we will take into one planet combination. Similarly, Jupiter, if it's a horror lord and Venus with combination, the native is asking regarding his wife and wealth and about the properties and those kind of things. These are the indications you'll be getting when you look at the chart, right? Now, the same thing if Venus is a horror lord and the, along with the moon is another planet, the question is about financial transactions, the native's money is under control by somebody suffering with bad debits, bad debts, because moon is always gives that cunningness from this particular way, uh, Kashiva Horror Nadi Principles point of view. So look at those aspects and understand what other things as well, right? So we talked about Saturn and the moon. Saturn is basically work. Moon is a, a place for a change or maybe a travel. So it's basically saying that maybe the, that the Prishna is telling that this person wanted to see, do I have a chance for a change of place? Or I'm having some problems in workplace, right? So that is the indications will be given by the horror lot. The similarly Rahu with son, difficulties for natives, uh, father, a guru or boss, in the sense son is the fatherly figure. So that's why is, Rahu is giving the implications, indications for there's a problems coming up there. Similarly, Ketu plus Mars, one of the brothers of blood editors is in difficult situations because Ketu is the impediments causing all these obstacles and those kind of things, right? So I think these are the some of the highest level small examples of Karakathvas with one horror lord. I think please you must read the books of Kajira Ogaru uh, so get more details of this. It's difficult to give everything in in this particular point of time. Similarly, we'll go to horror lord with multiple uh, planets. We saw only one planet. Now we'll see more than one planet. So in this example, if we take Sun as a horror lord. It is with Ketu and Saturn. So again, we need to see the Puranic relevance, as I said. Sun represents the father. Saturn represents the son, which is a son of the father. Ketu in between representing litigation. So we can say that because of looking at this combination, we can say, looks like the father and son are actually not in a good time. They have some indications for uh, litigation aspects between father and son. Because Ketu is the flag, Dvaja, we talked about it. So that's how we need to delineate. Similarly, another sequence would be now more than one, uh, more than one planet here, two or three planets. Sun is the horror lord, and both father and son is a son. And in between, you see Ketu and the Venus. So what it is telling us is these father and son having a dispute or litigation aspects because of the Venus, which is health and house and property issues. That's what they press now based on a Kashyap or an you can you can identify right so like that we can go for mars venus combination probably you can read those now i want to touch base before we go to the prishna principles of Kashyap Hora. i want to talk about retrograde planets the retrograde planets has got a significant role in Kashyap or an so consider a planet is a retro motion you must take this into the previous sign because it is looking back going back to the previous sign so that's how we need to look into right and also, when it goes to the, when aspects the previous sign, are there any friendly planets there to this horror lord? Then the native will enjoy the beneficial aspects, benefit results, right? And if when it looks back to the previous sign, if there are enemy planets there with this horror lord, we're talking about horror lord in retrograde mo motion only, not other planets, horror lord in retro, Vakragati, vakra right? Then the native will experience inauspicious native aspects as well. So look at this from a previous sign, horror lord and who are there in that particular sign uh, that is very important for to consider for analysis of the chart right for example another one is exchange of parivartana in this uh, in this chart i think the native who's appeared for prashna during the mars um, horror lord and mars is debilitated in cancer as you all know but mars is actually having a parivartana with the moon in uh, scorpio so in this case, what happens is, so there's a parivartana between Mars and uh, Moon. This is what you need to consider. And also look at what are these indications, what planets is actually joined with this parivartana before and after. You need to consider those into consideration as well, right? So I think we talked about some basic foundations. Maybe next few minutes, I'll take some concise and precise principles of Kashyapa Horanadi, which is derived from Sri Ajigaru's uh, book. 
The first one is take the horror lord and see in which sign and direction he's placed. Remember, I talked about it, the directions of each, each Rashi has got direction. See which sign it is placed and which direction. And if other planets are in the same sign or direction, for example, if you take Aries, if the sun and sun is horror lord, Mars is placed, then sun and moon to be considered together, right? And if the other other uh, Rashi's directions, if the other planets are there, consider them as part of conjunction as well. This is the fundamental Kashyapuranadi principle. For example, if I go back to this particular chart, if we have, say, a sun here, I cannot write properly here. If we have a planet in the east, see, this is the east direction, the horror lot. And if we have any planet in the east, we should consider. And also, if any planet here in the east, we should consider. So this is how we should see the directional uh, co combinations as considered as conjoined in the first principle. Hope you understand this clearly. The second one is if there are more than one planet in any particular sign, the same direction signs, then put them into their ascending order. If I go back here, say, if you have three planets in north direction, let me clear this and uh, start again. So if you're taking, this is the direction for this, and moon is your horolard. So you have four planets in this northern direction. There is no planet here, and there are three more planets here. So basically, you have seven planets, right? So you have to take them into the order of the degrees. One, two, three, four, just regular sequence. You've got to consider them and put them in that order before you delineate into the uh, into the pressure shaft, right? So that's the second principle. Um, and also what I found to be interestingly giving lots of value, if a planet just moved to that particular Rashi, that particular direction, uh, is it close the borderline? Then consider that as well, because that has got something to tell. The same way, consider that if the, the Graha is at end point, 28 degrees, 29 degrees, ready to go to the next sign, even though it is considered part of that directional combination, keep that, keep that note while you do the analysis as well. Look for any planets who are placed in second, seventh, and eleventh signs from the Horolard. Just a very important principle. If your Horolard is in one place, Aries, second house, and seventh house, and eleventh house, a sign. So take those into as a combination for considering the for Horolard cheating as well. Then look for the second, fifth, and seventh signs for Horolard. Again, the key distinction between the principle three and four, the, the planets in the second, fifth, and seventh they are friendly, inimical to the horror lord. That's what we need to understand, right? So keep this in mind when you delineate and say, because we'll be looking at the casualty effects, the Karakatvas, the Grahas in these second, fifth, and seventh from the horror lord positions, and are they friends or enemies? You got to consider before you give the analysis. If there are planets in third and eleventh to the horror lord, the nature of those planets must be considered. Nature. See, this is a different thing again. The nature is, is it an Agni Tattva, a fire element? What's the Stiti they are? Those kind of things you need to consider. If the Horolard is associated with more than one inimical planet, then it is to be decided that the strength of the Horolard is weak. Naturally, if I'm if a, if a Graha is along with uh, multiple malefic planets, naturally the power will be reduced. It will be weak. He or she will be weak. you got to consider that way. Even the horror lord is exalted and is with the inimical planet, then it's to be predicted that the native would not be able to enjoy any success in their efforts because even the exaltation, the Garha is there, but because of the inimical planets, it, the power will be reduced. Similarly, principle number eight, if the horror lord is exalted having an exchange with other planet and the planet involved with exchange of beneficial or one other you remember, I was giving an example in the uh, Parivartana. The Mars was debilitated but went back to Moon. Moon has got own, own position going back to Moon, and Mars is going back to Scorpio. Come uh, along with other planets, we need to see what are those planets debilitated or exalted. See what are the associated other planets, and accordingly, we need to delineate as well. Then the horror lord is with a friendly planet, and if the planet is associated with inimical planets, Consider these friendly inimical pet very, very uh, carefully because they have a significant role to play in Kashyapa Horanadi principle analysis, right? Also make a note whether the moon is in Shukla Paksha, which is waxing, 
then considered as little strong, and Krishna Paksha is weak. Again, there are multiple definitions, as you all know. Um, some people take from Pardimi, which is Pratipada, to uh, Pardimi, then Amavasya. And some people take good as Astami to uh, Saptami of Shukla Paksha to Krishna Paksha. So find out the best way uh, which works for you and take the, the definition of moon to strength, Shukla Paksha versus the Krishna Paksha. Again, you got to find out. I think my definition, what I follow is very traditional. First Tithi to 15th Tithi is good and 15th Tithi backward direction, Krishna to the, uh, what do you call the Shukla Paksha is strong and Krishna Paksha is weak, right? The next topic is um, if if the person, uh, person is asking a question, that person may have more than one question or sometimes not today, but earlier days, there are two, three people are waiting in the room and waiting for to ask you the question, right? So how do we take this? So I think based on my experience and uh, experience conducted these prashnas, I think possibly I was able to tell the answers up to three questions. Beyond three, I was, I was not successful. Uh, so I would possibly say what I found to be working is if the first person is asking the question, there are three uh, in the room or maybe in the waiting for you to be addressed to them, take the horror lord for the first person. And you finish the uh, analysis, finish that, because remember, horror lord takes about a, an hour to change, which means if you finish the analysis, waiting for the second person to give the answer to again, horror lord did not change yet, right? So it could change, it may not change. If it did not change, then take the second person as fifth sign from the horror lord. Understood. Hopefully you understand that. And the third person is taken by the ninth sign from the horror lord, if the horror lord is same within that uh, span of duration of time, right? So the, similarly, we can say, uh, if person is asking a question, say, um, sir, my father is not feeling well, he's in a hospital, and uh, do you think he'll be he'll be recovered? First question is horror lord. When you answer that question, still the he's asking, uh, thinking about second question is saying that, sir, I got one more question. If the horror lord still did not change, then the question should be taken. The second question, if this is relevant or not relevant, we need to see. If the second question, the same person is asking, say, my father is recovered well. You already gave the second question is. Is Dr. Uh, XYG is going to perform the surgery, right? They're related, related to the same question, but again, different question. So then you need to consider the fifth sign from the horror lord because it is a different question, even though it is related because different question is a Dr. XYG coming into play. So apply those uh, common essential processes into this and accordingly you can choose first, second, third. I have not experienced more than three because which is possibly should be for the next day. So the last, I think, possibly the Kashiba Horonadi principle, which I think possibly are taking into consideration is if the Nedu comes in Rahu column. I know some folks consider Rahu column in southern India. They do. Some people probably may not. If you consider Rahu column, check the Horo Lord is friendly to Rahu or not, right? Because if, if the friendliness is not there, possibly the results will change. If it is friendly, you can predict uh, beneficial results. If it's enemical, the negative results will be considered as well. So consider that. Again, I'm not going to the details of Rahu column calculations, so you all know how to do it. So pick that up, right? If you're not considering Rahu column, please, for Kashyap Horonadi principles point of view, please consider that one, right? So having said that, now I want to take a few minutes. I think we have... Uh, probably another 20 minutes or so. So let's take some examples to see the actions of these principles. Very simple, straightforward. It looks a little complicated, but when you practice it, uh, it'll be awesome. So try these out there. So the couple of formats I wanted to talk about to you, you see the chart number one here. This is just an example. I may, I may take two or three chart examples to go very deep so that you understand the application of these principles at this level. And you don't know the question, but now I know because I'm kind of giving this to you, the native question was this. So that's what you see here. Native's daughter having a quarrels and litigation sex. So that's, that's the question the person was asking. I have highlighted the horror lord in, in this color. And also you see a little bold color on this chart in the left-hand side. 
So pay attention to these things. Then, as usual, the directions are already marked for you for your convenience. I think it's very important. As I said, this is the foundations of Kashyap or Nadi principles. And also, if it is continued analysis, you'll see the continued in the, in the bottom of this, right? So having said that, so this native approached for Prashna to me uh, during the Saturn Hora for consultation, right? So here the moon is a ninth to Saturn. If you look at this ninth, look at this one, Saturn is the Hora Lord and Southern direction and also Southern direction moon is there. So based on our first principle, we need to consider any grahas with this. There's no graha here in Southern direction. That's what we're saying, right? So indicating some acquisitions to this person. So there's something mischief is coming in. That's what it is indicating right away. And moon is also mother. And the 11th to Saturn is Mercury. If you look at the principle, as I said, 3, 7, 11, and say this, this is the 11th house to the combination of the Saturn Lord. This is the 11th house, right? So we need to consider this. And Venus and Mercury are female planets which is basically the Mars in between them is indicating that the native daughter is with the husband. See this, Venus and Mars coming together. So which means the daughter and the Mars is her husband is together. So I mean, you can look at those principles straight away. This is what the current situation is. And the native did not even expl explain to you, but you can see those kind of things straight away. Now, if you look at the moon is in 11th from Scorpio, See this, this position from here? And aspects moon give effects on the Mercury, Venus, and Mercury. So whenever the moon is 11th house, based on our principles, this gives aspects to all these grahas in, the, in this direction, right? So the moon is giving uh, indications of cunningness and also misunderstanding to who? The native's daughter and the son-in-law, Mars and Venus. That's what it is indicating. So. We went to the indication starting point. What are the grahas there? Now we're looking at the 11th position from this. So taking that into consideration before we give the analysis to the person asking this question. Now, if you go to the detail again, at the time of Prashna, Guru is in Simha Rashi, right? And he is not aspecting either Chandra. There's no aspect at all because there's only two second position. And Shani in the Horala, there's no aspect on Shani as well. That's what the Guru is saying. So when Guru transits over to Kanya Rashi, when it comes here, then what happens? Then he is going to be with Chandra and also having southern direction aspect to Saturn. So we'll have aspects to Moon as well as Saturn. That's what he's saying, right? So which means uh, the Buddha, Kuja, and Shukra, they will be looking at the Jupiter at the 11th house. It means Jupiter, when it comes here, 11th aspect will be on this. So what it means, whenever the Jupiter transits here, then these implications will come to a little bit more favorable to solve the problem. That's what it is indicating to us, right? So let's go further down. The native approached, uh, sorry. So this is how probably will say, again, you need to see when Jupiter is, how many degrees is already passed? Does it take one year? Does it take half year? Does it take three months? Calculate that. And say so whenever the Jupiter comes to a transits to Virgo, the Kanya Rashi, he can tell the disputes between the litigation aspects of this daughter and son, uh, daughter and uh, son-in-law will be over. That's how probably we can delineate and tell the answer to this particular native. Hope you understand this. Let's take one more example. So this person comes to consultation and asking like, Guruji, I have, a, I have an opportunity for change of place. Can you tell me what is it? Is it something good, something should I go, should I not go? That's his question, right? So now as per the principles, Jupiter Hora is highlighted here. That's what he came. And this is in the sign of uh, Mars. Remember I told you, you have to see the planetary aspects of it and what signs they are. The signs aspect of this is the, this Mars is indicating the native's career is industrial in, industrial lines, heavy machinery because of Mars, because of Scorpio, right? And this Mercury is 11th from Jupiter. And also we can say uh, the Mercury is actually 11th from Jupiter. That's what I was kind of trying to say. 
you need to see, see the principle there. And Mercury is north of Jupiter, Mercury aspect to moon with seven indicating. And this moon is actually having a seventh aspect, right? The relative or friend pertain to lands. So you can see that this person is coming and also talking about Mercury's relative or friend pertain to lands, moon indicating as always moon gives that mischievousness, right? So cunningness, hence the native is suffering due to cheating through relative or close friends. That's what you can say. Mercury, friends, moon, Jupiter's 11th aspect on this. That's what we can say at this point of time. Also, you can see Jupiter and moon also in the northern direction, right? So we consider these are together based on our Kashyap Koronari principle too. So when these are together, then you can say, hmm, this native is actually looking for a change of distance places because it's going far away different than the native's place. That, that's the kind of analysis at this point of time. Let's take more deeper. So according to directional aspect, Jupiter moon, the native will have undergo some changes. We talked about it. And why the seven to eight months? Because Jupiter resides for one year in this Rashi. And when I calculated this is already three months into this Rashi. So we can tell basically that Jupiter when moves away from this, then possibly the, the travel things will continue within next three, four months, because Jupiter is already here for so many months, right? So calculate and see how far this Jupiter transit already taking place in Scorpio. What is the pending number of days or months? Then accordingly, you could calculate the effect of this actual changes taking place, right? So that's the timing also you can see. Now, if you look at the one other one, the next moon is placed in second to retrograde Saturn, as you can see here. Okay, I think I need to put some power card because of the power, it needs an extra battery. Okay, so Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius or Kumbharashi, which is next to his moon. Hence, the native got dilemma whether the change, because remember the retrograde Saturn means it goes to the previous Rashi, so it is coming here, which means the third position again is looking into this, right? So this way you can say, third and 11 combination to moon that because of Saturn is retrograde. So he's thinking, he's confused, his dilemma whether to change the place or not. That's what it is indicating to us. What for re what reasons? Saturn represents the job, career, right? So that's what we need to understand. And hence the NATO enjoys beneficial afters, few months because when Jupiter is coming here, he'll be looking at the third house as we talked about before. So we can conclude by combinations of Saturn, moon and Jupiter this confirmed that this change for the native is, for the career point of view, is completely confirmed. Then we can see some more aspects as well. As I said, you got to take all planets into consideration, different directions, different signs. Now let's take into the other piece as well. If you see Ketu, Sun, and Venus are in East sign, East sign of this, East sign of this, and and there is no planet in this particular sign, right? Indication that some of these money matters benefit due to the or in litigations. Why? Because if you look at this Ketu coming into the aspects of East uh, Sun and Venus, so the, the litigation, as I mentioned to you, the Dwaja, the, the, the disputes, those are coming to action. And one thing we need to always look into is Ketu and Rahu considered from the uh, 38 degrees minus, which is backward directions, anti-clockwise for degrees point of view. So right now, Ketu has finished three-fourths of degrees on Aries. Hence, it concluded the litigation would arrive analysis within three to four months. So we can tell this also indicating a similar time frame with the, when Jupiter is also moving to this transit to this Rasi, they both are giving three to four months of time frame. We can say the disputes and change of place because of the career indications, you can possibly conclude that's how the analysis is going to be concluded, right? So again, combining all these pieces together, we can see all the planets are influencing in some directional changes. And also the guru, when he's moved from uh, northern direction to uh, east direction, and also when Ketu comes back here, we can conclude that basically all the, all the disputes and we take place and the person will have a change of place concluded as well. I know I'm giving lots of indications in a short span of time. 
take your time a little bit, digest this, maybe listen to this conversation a uh, couple of times, probably you'll get more detailed understanding of this uh, analysis of Prashna charts, right? And another Prashna uh, was basically asked by a person who came on during the Saturn Hora. This person says, we, we have children, but we don't have a male child. That was the question, right? I mean, this I'm revealing to you today, but when person comes in, you don't know. But how do you find this? So the Saturn Hora, as you say, bold here, just for convenience for you. And the planet from the same Rashis for southern direction, you have southern direction here and also southern direction here, which means we have Saturn and Ketu and Jupiter, right? I'll consider Saturn with the Venus. Um, this is already with Venus here, Saturn, along with the Hora Lord. And Ketu is a flag sign and also repeated planet Jupiter. And the native, the person who is coming to you, you can tell this person is coming from a very big, uh, you know, reputable family person, is a wealthy man. And also the combination of Ketu is a very powerful flag kind of situation, like a, a bureaucrat. You can tell the native's description by looking at these uh, pieces as well before we answer the question for this person, right? The next one is the NATO doesn't have any good combinations to have male issues because uh, male issues yoga governed by the planets Surya and Jupiter. These are the two planets based on Kashyap Horanadi principles give the male children indications for you, right? Why we're we saying there's no combinations? Because sun is under control of Rahu because Rahu is along with the sun, right? And control of Rahu and also they are placed exactly 11th from Saturn, which is the Hora Lord. So which means the Hora Lord is a Prashna. It is telling that this person's son is under control of Rahu and the son is one of the Karakatva plants for giving male children. So the indications to you as an astrologer, keep in mind, you're not giving the right answer right now. Still, you're looking more. I said, hmm, looks like there's a difficulty for this person to have a male child, right? <laughs> Then also Saturn, Venus, both are enemies to Sun, right? So these are Saturn, Venus, are enemies to Sun. Sun is the Karka again. So Mars is enemy to Mercury. You can see the Mars and Mercury combinations out there. So north sign here, north in direction, and north in direction here, right? So these are the some additional delineations possibly you can see um, before you go and conclude the answer. So continuing this. Mercury is not strong. Why? Because of the explanation of what we had earlier. And also Jupiter, the main benefic planet here, is not having any planet adjoining the signs. Whenever there is no planets before after Jupiter, consider that Jupiter is not strong at all. So that person, the question possibly will not be giving a benefic uh, results. That's what just keep that as a principle. Uh, while delineating using Kashyap or Nadi principles, right? Beside the moon meant for womb, I think that's what we know. Moon is basically the Karakatwa to give the womb for the uh, women. And he's with the retro Mars. So the, finally, it can be directed that the native coming for question is no yogas. I think the combination of this, combination of earlier discussions, what we had on this chart, they're indicating that, uh, that they're possibly not, not having enough time. So, which means now concluding this session, now we can say the karaka for male issues are Surya and Jupiter, which is Surya and Guru. Surya is reflected by Rahu. Guru has no planets on either side of, hence it, both, it cannot give any benefit results to this native. From whole lot shining, uh, the seventh is occupied by Chandra, and also, uh, which is also has got retrograde Mars. So the, the Kuza also get afflicted by Shani because of aspects of it. So the native will have practically not good yogas for having a male children uh, for this Prashna, right? So anyhow, so this is how we can we can delineate this and also you can extend some other principles. If you, by looking at, they can say Surya is with Rahu, it indicates a Sapadosham. Uh, so this parental side of difficulty, reward is Dasha. I mean, there are so many other things we can go. But at least you can see how we can actually apply these principles into the action as well, right? So I think uh, maybe I would stop here because of the time. Um, 
I wanted to just share with you some of these books I referred other than Kashyap or Nadi. Try to see if you can get these books, Fundamentals of Our Rao System of Nadi Astrology, which I am actually was able to get some 108 copies of those books. And whoever is, um, whoever is actually sending the reply to me with the analysis using Kashyap Horadi principles, they'll get this book. The book may not be in a good shape or condition physically, but the content is good. Um, then also Kashyap Horadi principles, Rigunandinadi, you can read all these fantastic books by R.G. Ravagaru. With this note, possibly I'll say, uh, maybe ready to take some uh, questions and answers and we'll wrap this up. I uh, hope you got some good principles and some key pointers. I know I'm rushing towards a little quicker because I, my desire is to give the principles to you. And if you listen to this multiple times, probably you'll get it and practice this and use this as one additional tool you have as an astrologer. As I said, remember having a different camera set up in multiple directions and take those images and synthesize them together, then probably you can describe a better object, basically. And in other words, from Prashna's standpoint, it can describe much more easier and give some accurate analysis as well. With that, I'll go back to Prasanna Garu. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. Girish, are you there? Yeah, I think Himanshu Tiwari was asking a question. What if the person who is asking the question is not very serious on getting the correct answer? Can we still use the Hora Prashna to get the correct answer? I think this is a very good question, Himanshu. Remember, we have to find out the intention of this Prashna, a desire. If you think if the Prashna is not, the, the quarant is not serious about it, then simply say, I think uh, the right now the, uh, the indications are not good. And uh, so maybe come, come back later on. Just gently, just uh, just put that kind of uh, put kind of the kind of answer for that. Okay. Any other questions? Rupa Modi, you said Mercury represents land, isn't it Mars? Yes, Bhutatva as well as the house as well as the land. You got to see. Consider those aspects again. Look at the Rashis as well. So I think the Kashyapuranadi principles are slightly different. So consider this Mercury for the land as well. Swagat, if a person asks about a government job, shall we use Kashyapahora? I think Kashyapahora is not only for government job. I think this, just like any other Prashna tool, uh, methods. So you can use for not only for government job, you can also use for private job as well. So any karma related, Saturn related activities, you can apply this. Uh, Kashyap Nadi principles. Fani Raj uh, asking question, if the Hora Lord is on cusp, what can you recommend should we take next house or the earlier house Guruji? Remember the cusp concept, you're not using it. Just use a standard 30 degrees. And that's why I said in, uh, in one of the presentation slides, consider is it close to the few degrees, first degrees or the last degrees? Then still you will be considering the, the 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 Rashi where it is, but consider what the movements are. For example, we can say if the Venus is just 28 degrees of Scorpio going to Sagittarius, and the, the question is related the dispute between husband and wife, the Mars is indicating that. Then you can say that this person, the who the Venus is wife, she just left the house or about to leave the house. That kind of delineation we need to take. So cusp is not here. Just take the standard Vedic principles of 30 degrees. Consider the degrees movement very close by one or two degrees either side of it. One degree or two degrees back to 29 degrees and 28 degrees to the next house. Okay. Any other questions?
Yes, I think uh, Abhishek was asking a question. Is the Karakatva a different from Parashar Maharshi? They are slightly different. That's why I said, use this Kashyapa Horanade principles exclusively on itself. And the first fundamental thing is we should not be mixing multiple methods at all. Anytime you do, as I said, put a camera here, look at the face and apply that principles only. Put a camera here, apply these principles. Put a camera here, apply these principles independently. Then combine them. If you try to mix Prashara, Jaimini and other Padatis and methods, possibly it's not, it's not a good idea at all. Okay, so looks like uh, we do not have any other questions. So Prashannaji, you wanted to conclude the session? Girish, any other questions? Okay, with that, I think possibly we'll uh, end this session today. Again, thank you for the opportunity and hope you all had some, um, some principles to work with. So take this into consideration, apply these principles along with others. Again, use this independently. Don't mix with any other methods. Then take other principles methods and see how they're giving the same results, same messages to you. That's how you need to practice going forward. Again, as I said, uh, I placed that question to you. Um, I think go back to that question. The question was asked by somebody in USA. They lost the money in the stock market trading in 2021. Uh, they're asking, will I get that lost money back in 2022 stock trading? That's the question. So take that, cast your chart, Prashna chart at your location. So send me the Prashna date, Prashna time, Prashna place, and what horror lot you've taken. Write the analysis to my email address. And uh, once I got that email address, and I'll send you a book by R.G. Rao Garu, uh, the, the fundamentals of book. It will be coming to your home address. Send that as well. With that, I want to take uh, leave from all of you. And I wish you all the best to learn this method and apply. Om Sri Ayi Namaha. Om Sri Ayi Namaha. Om Sri Ayi Namaha. Thank you all. Bye for now.